Okay, well, here we are having fun in our RV. Why don't you come along with us, check it out. Maybe it'll be a place you might wanna go. Uh, this trip, we're going to Davis Mountain State Park in the area around it. Now, we went there some time ago just to do a video on the historic site, the Fort Davis historic site, National Historic Site. And that video is on our uh, page. But uh, this time, it's about going to the state park and exploring the stuff the state park has to offer, as well as the things around the state park, like for example, the town of Fort Davis. But also, while in this area, we're going to go visit oh, Marfa and Alpine and the town of Marathon, with, which only has 365 people. And if you're one of those 365 people, you don't call this town Marathon. Only people out of from out of town call it Marathon. They call it Marathon. And so we're going to go visit Marath Marathon, and and uh, and it's hard for me to say that Marathon, and and uh, try to uh, show you a little bit about it. It's really interesting. But it, there may be three different episodes or videos about this trip. But uh, we've got a lot to talk to you about, and uh, you're not going to believe it. So come along, come with us, have fun in our RV. We're here at Davis Mountains State Park. Uh, I'm gonna use the word abundance a lot probably in my videos. Uh, this park is abundant in so many ways in animals and vistas and things of that nature. Uh, unlike a lot of state parks, there's an abundance of full hookup uh, RV sites. A lot of parks don't have any. Oh, here comes one of our great uh, park hosts that you run into that helps you all the time. And, uh, uh, and so they, 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 they offer an abundance of help. I, I want to say abundance a lot, abundance of animals. But the coolest thing, of course, is the uh, uh, large number of full hookups that they have at this park. A lot of my favorite parks like um, Goose Island or um, uh, Lake Mineral Wells State Park have none, have no full hookups. So this is really nice that this park does. Okay. And we are site number 15. I've already taken some pictures of that. You should be seeing that right about now. And uh, the funny thing about Site 15, yeah, it's an excellent site, but uh, there's another guy that's a, um, uh, a Texas Park camper or campsite state park reviewer. I forgot his name. It should be on the bottom of the page right now. I'll put it here. He did a review of this very park, and he also did a review of this very same site. And uh, he did that after we'd already booked it, so it's kind of cool. But then uh, you get his opinion on it too. But anyway, that's it. We're just that great sites, great park. But as far as the review of campsites, great campsites. Earlier this year, we came to Davis Mountain State Park and the only campsite they had left, this was scheduling it months in advance, was number 35. I do not recommend trying to put an RV, backing an RV, that is to say a trailer, into 35. You have to first back into somebody else's site, basically, and then make a hard turn in order to get into this thing. If you are, say, tent camping, it's kind of perfect because you can pull your car in here and set your tent up on that uh, flat part back behind it. 
In fact, we saw some people doing that when we first arrived on this trip. They had a nice tent. It even had an air conditioner in it that was both cooling it and inflating it. It was a really nice uh, uh, setup that they had. But backing a trailer into here between these trees and then backing across somebody else's site, do not get 35 if you have an RV travel trailer. Okay, as I said, I use the word abundance a lot when talking about this state park. There is an abundance of trails throughout this park for every skill level. Um, some of them are fairly level, some of them do climb in elevation, but not that much. Others, say like this one behind us, it goes all the way to that summit way up there. And that summit is the Skyline Drive. Now you can get there one of two ways. You can get there by biking this trail right behind me, or you can actually go down a little bit further and there's a nice road that goes all the way to the top. Now, if you get out of your trailer before uh, daybreak and kind of look this direction, you'll see kind of a line of cars going up there to go up there and watch the sunrise and get that incredible view out over uh, Fort Davis and the plains and all this kind of stuff. Um, there is also up there the uh, trail that leads down to the historic fort. And so you can get there a couple of ways. You can drive all the way down and around and all kinds of stuff, or you can hike, you can go, you can hike up this trail and walk down to the fort and see the fort. It's kind of a neat perspective to also see the fort from, from that angle. It's kind of cool. You can really get a feel for what the fort was like during its day, how big it was and things that were going on by looking at it from above. But anyway, this is the Skyline Drive Trail, not to be confused with the Skyline Drive Road, which both go the same place. But we're gonna go ahead and hike at least some of it here in uh, just a minute, so uh, here we go. Montezuma Quail Trail. Uh, while the, uh, the summit to the Skyline Road is a really long trail, I mean, we're talking like four hours or something like that. This one is relatively shorter. It's only a mile and a half. And uh, uh, if you hike all the way out to like the Indian uh, Lodge Trail and back or something like that, and, but it, and it does have a little bit of uh, elevation, some steps and things like that, but it's a much easier trail than say that uh, uh, that summit to the Skyline Road Trail would be, okay? Um, there are other ones, there's the CCC Trail, a whole bunch of trails. I'm gonna take this one because I would like to see a Montezuma quail, a very striking bird. I think in a previous uh, segment, I may have accidentally called it Guadalupe quail or something like that. And, uh, but no, it's the Montezuma quail that's kind of a rare quail and a very striking bird. And so we're gonna try to take this trail kind of quietly and see if we can see any of the birds that uh, uh, inhabit this area that are kind of cool. Let's go. Okay, as you can see, the first half of this trail is kind of steep and a lot of loose rock. I highly recommend walking sticks for trails like this, okay? The other thing I highly recommend is anytime you're hiking in uh, West Texas, take plenty of water. Don't just take one little bottle of water you bought at the, the you know, 7-Eleven or whatever. Take a lot, we've got six in here. So, and that's probably barely enough, even for this short trail. So, this is, we're at high altitude, we're at around, 6,000 feet, we're not used to it. We live at around 600 feet above sea level. And uh, so the first half of this trail is a doozy. Come on, we're not giving up.
hi, here we are driving up to the McDonald Observatory. This shot is for people who think Texas is flat. Now, I'm looking right now at about 10 people who could tell you Texas isn't flat because they rode their bikes up there. And so, they'll tell you that Texas isn't flat. But Texas, this is, this is the Davis Mountains, and I'm in love with the Davis Mountains. I just love them. And, uh, uh, but people think, well, okay, there, Texas has one little mountain range. No, Texas has 13 mountain ranges. You've got the Davis Mountains, the Franklin Mountains, the Glass Mountains, the Beach Mountains. You, you've got all kinds of mountains all over the place. And the Davis Mountains just have to be some of the most picturesque. It's a good size. Uh, of course, Guadalupe Mountains has just happens to have the tallest peak in, in Texas, but 13 mountain ranges and over 2,000 named peaks in this state. Texas is not flat. Okay, but we're back down to 30 miles an hour for the town of Fort Davis. Something to uh, keep in mind, the speed limit in the town of Fort Davis is indeed 30 miles an hour. It's a quaint town with a lot of interesting places to, uh, to maybe shop, I guess you could say, or, uh, or eat, but it's not a big town. It's got a couple of gas stations, it's got a Dollar General, but it's got historical stuff all its own. After all, this was the town or the, where the town was that grew up around the Fort Fort Davis. And so it's got a history that's associated with the fort. Okay, we're just gonna drive through here and let you see a little bit of it as, uh, as we drive. Now, you can see that there's a uh, Overland Trail Museum. Uh, there was a, the, a trail that went from basically San Antonio to California. Actually, that trail started even further south than San Antonio, more like Indianola. But the trail, and the trail, you can still see remnants of it. And this was a trail that did not freeze over in the wintertime, so you could go year round. There's also a museum about the uh, stagecoach line that went through here. And so there's a lot to see and do in the town of Fort Davis itself. And uh, we're gonna, maybe eat at uh, a couple places here and uh, and do a review of the food so uh, check back with us later sometimes you see uh, references to Olympia, the Olympia Creek Trail we're gonna hike on maybe tomorrow, uh, and Hotel Olympia. These, these used to be called the, the Olympia Mountains. I have no idea what that means unless somebody was just missing up, messing up the word Olympia, but they got changed to the uh, uh, Davis Mountains. And uh, anyway, uh, this is the town of Fort Davis, which is the uh, town uh, just outside the gate for the uh, for the historical fort, which we did a video on before. So anyway, here it is, the town of Fort Davis. We're going to try to eat at uh, one of these bar and grills or places later on. Just so you know, here in Fort Davis, across the street from what is essentially the gas station, is the big grocery store. Let's go check it out. There you go. Pretty much got everything you need right there. I'm going to miss the grocery store.